and let's enjoy this first ride cruising comet with Sarah Joy Crane mount aboard. Right off the bat, you can see it, it's amazing how quickly these horses adjust to the different disciplines because this is just a completely different way of going. Uh, the head is long and low. The hunters, you want to break at the at the wither um, with the jumpers, and you'll see back in dressage, you want them to break at the pole, but it's uh, a longer rein, a lower head, a very nice rhythmic, steady rhythm. And of course, a braided tail. So it seems, Ashley, almost like they just want to get these horses into just a nice, smooth canter and then make the jump just be sort of a little blip rather than really get a lot of propulsion upwards for it. Absolutely. You don't want to have any change of rhythm or balance. If you look, the horse's head almost stays the exact same as it goes up. Ooh. Oh, I think uh, I he think just saw himself. <laughs> I do that sometimes first thing in the morning when I see myself. Oh, God. <laughs> but look at him get right back to yeah, it. Yeah, what a nice uh, recovery. And Okay, back to work. By both horse and rider. <laughs> you see, he, he's definitely still a little bit of a f affected by that. Uh, I think he took a, a stride out of there and took a, a, a big long distance. Again, a green horse competition, so... Yeah, he um, took a stride out there, too. Yeah, they're... He's watching himself again <laughs> <Yes>. closely. <laughs> and to keep that perfect steady rhythm, um, you really want to, to hit that nice distance where your horse is not having to stretch over the jump. That's Cruz and Comet and Sarah Joy Crane Mount. Different environment for the show hunters in the TCA covered arena compared to the prelim rounds that, that they did earlier in the week. Yeah, we had mentioned earlier how uh, the finale was going to be a really different competition for a couple of the, the different disciplines because they're not used to being in here. Hunters was exclusively outside and they may have just had their first time in the covered arena last night just to just to see it so uh, that was a really lovely round but uh, definitely got a little distracted when he realized he was on the big screen for that last horse want to recognize thoroughbred athletes incorporated who assisted in transitioning the horse cruise and comet from the track to the show world so the course is now being changed from the three foot height to the two foot six height for the show hunter discipline. Thank you to all of the volunteers and it's amazing the transformation that this covered arena will go through throughout the day because we started with eventing and then we changed the fences up for show hunters and then by the end of the day we're going to throw some cattle in here. So. And, and that speaks to the versatility of the breed to be able to handle all the, the different disciplines that we cram into to one day. It's a tremendous showcase for thoroughbreds. It also speaks to the work that these volunteers are doing. They, they have been here, I think, since the wee hours of the morning and they'll stay till late at night and uh, just doing whatever it takes to make the event happen as seamlessly as possible. And doing it because we all kind of share the same inspiration that we get from these horses, from this event, and all just kind of give ourselves a little bit more because of, of all that the horses are giving us. And we'd stated earlier in the other disciplines that there's no edge that's gained or lost with the different heights. It's about knowing your horse and what you feel that you can best represent your horse's talent with. So Ashley, now that they are dropping the fences to a little lower level, the, the rest of the horses in this, um, in this discipline will stay at this lower level? Yes, there were only the two different heights offered. So we had the one go at the higher level and then the other four will be going uh, at this lower level. Ashley, the different 
fences that, that you see um, in terms of the, the decorations. They're, they're, this, there's a purpose behind it. It, this is classic hunters. If, it, one thing with hunters is you want continuity. You want your horses to be consistent. You want your horses to be steady. And for that to happen, you kind of got to know what to expect. So if you go to any hunter show, this, this is what you're going to see. So it is a great job by uh, everyone who works here and has volunteered here to set this up to look like a top class hunter ring, uh, beautiful flowers, beautiful decorations, uh, but you want consistency. You want those natural rails, those plain colored rails. Uh, you have some nice standards, but it, it's really about a lot of flowers, a lot of consistency, steady throughout the whole course. Since the Thoroughbred Makeover came here to the Kentucky Horse Park in 2015, we've had the Thoroughbred Makeover champion crowned each year has represented a different discipline. We haven't had a winner yet from show hunters or field hunters, but we have seen some very nice show hunters go around for the thoroughbreds. And if anything, I'm almost a little bit more impressed by the show hunters considering what their background was on the racetrack. I think some of it comes down, especially when you have the, when it was it was voted on and you could text in. A lot of the times the finale, you want something big and flashy, like a, the freestyle horse with all the props and, and jumping barrels. And, and the whole goal of hunters is to almost be inconspicuous, is to be quiet and calm and rhythmic. So I think maybe some of that is lost, but it is incredibly impressive how you can take a racehorse and then get them... You know, on a loose rein going over at this rhythm. It, it really is a great feat. And we'll see it next from the next horse and rider to go, number 1203. The horse has a name that if you're a horse racing fan, you'll know what the term means. It's win the shake. And the horse is trained and ridden by Charles Harefield, a professional rider from Johns Island, South Carolina. The horse is owned by Dory Munder and came off the track through the New Vocations Racehorse Adoption Program. Win the Shake had three career starts, and one of those was a win at Aqueduct in 2019, broke the maiden in a sprint race over six and a half furlongs, and then retired after racing at Belmont in June 2019. Jonathan, for those who don't know, what does win the shake reference? Donna, you want to take that one? <laughs> so when a horse is in for a claiming price, um, obviously the horse is for sale, but sometimes more than one person is interested in claiming that horse. And so if you have more than one, let's say two or 10 different people who have a, a claim in for the horse, then they put pills in a bottle and each one represents the different connections and then they shake and whoever wins the shake gets the claimed horse. It's a cool name for a horse, yeah. And, but I did look to see if the horse ever ran in a claiming race and he didn't. <laughs> Five-year-old, win the shake. Dark bay mare, plain bay mare. Does ha oh, go ahead. does have a nice steady rhythm. Uh, I would love to see with a bit more experience on this horse for her really to come over her back and be able to drop that head down a little bit longer and lower. But for the amount of time that they've had, uh, the, the rhythm and the, the contact is really quite nice. Charles is clicking to the horse approaching each of the, the fences. And I believe the only discipline uh, presented here today that you are not allowed to talk to your horse is dressage. So you are allowed uh, to cue your horse, talk to them. Uh, and you'll see a lot in eventers, people really do a lot of talking with their horses. I think in dressage, you're also not allowed to pet them or touch them in any way to give them any cues other than at the end of it to give them a little pat. That's correct. That's Win the Shake and Charles Harefield aboard the five-year-old Dark Bay Mare that went through the New Vocations Racehorse Adoption Program.
<laughs> the next horse and rider to go will be number 1073. First commander, ridden by Katherine Jenkins, who's an amateur rider from Lugoff, South Carolina. Amazing race breeding on this horse, sired by the great sire Medallia Doro out of the Congrats Dam Emma's Encore. Lightly raced, had made just five starts on the track while representing the great Godolphin stable, and Godolphin's lifetime care program has helped assist many horses off the track into their new homes. They're longtime supporters of the Thoroughbred Makeover, and they have a banner here inside the covered arena. First Commander's racing career had five starts and had one top three finish, a horse that sold at the Keeneland sale in 2015 for $475,000, competing in show hunters as well as dressage this weekend. Jonathan, as you were talking about the good things that Godolphin does for aftercare, one of the other great things they do is I was at Keeneland the last two days. They have the Godolphin Thoroughbred Industry Employee Awards, and they have this now in five different countries. And so for them to sponsor that and present the whole thing here in the United States, it costs them at least $100,000 because of the rewards that they give to the employees. So they really have been wonderful for the industry, for both the horses and the people. I really admire what Godolphin does because that helps put the spotlight on the people who, you know, it, it, it's great if you're the owner, you're the trainer, you, you, you get to talk to Don after the race, but, <laughs> but the, the people who are spending the, the time with the horses and, and devoting their lives to the horses, Godolphin's been very good uh, about recognizing those workers and then recognizing the horses that uh, may not be going into their breeding farms and going through the, the lifetime care program. And one of the things about their lifetime care program is that it, when a horse gets adopted out, the dolphin will say, hey, if it doesn't work out, we'll take them back. No questions asked. So, Ashley, this is a hunter, so it's a little different than what we've seen from show jumping. Um, she hit that rail pretty hard on that one, but it didn't go down. Uh, will that? Will there be points from the judges against her, or there will be? Even this is 100% subjective, so definitely in this. But even in hunters, uh, obviously there's more points if it drops. But you are judged very much so on style. So if you touch a rail, you're that is going to affect you more than if you go over cleanly. Just like if you flatten over or you take you know that stride out and you have to work a little bit more all of that will affect the hunters I see. Catherine Jenkins and first commander completing their round in the show hunter ring inside the TCA covered arena and that will take us to the top two in the discipline coming into this finale. The next horse that will welcome into the ring, part of the class of 2020, number 1066, another dark bay mare. This is Eloquent Ethel, based with Stephanie Framer from Hinkley, Ohio. Another horse that went through the New Vocations Racehorse Adoption Program, and we've seen a few horses lightly raced, like that last horse, First Commander, with five lifetime starts. This horse, Eloquent Ethel, an eight-year-old who made 56 starts on the track, won six of them and was in the top three on 25 occasions and was bred in New York, raced in New York, and then came to Ohio and retired almost two years ago to the day, October 15, 2019, from Thistledown. So back to what you were saying, Ashley, with the difference between going from the show jumper to the show hunter. With the jumpers, you're like, whew, I got over it. We're good. Um, now, granted, in this competition, there is that judging component about their potential. But, but you know, traditional show jumpers, you just get over. This one, it's, it's how you, you get over. And so, yeah, you're right. You know, if you hit the rail, you know, if it stays up in show jumpers, you kind of breathe a sigh of relief in show hunters. Maybe you kick yourself a little bit. This is, this discipline is probably the one that's most closely uh, 
judged as it would be in a normal hunter show, at least that we've seen so far. That's a good uh, point. The, the other ones that we've seen, and even the, the field hunters, um, there's not a lot of subjective subjectivity in that. It's, you know, with show hunters, it's like, what's your time? How many rails did you drop? This one is very much on style, how you look, how rhythmic you are. And uh, with this horse, we had, had talked about this being a possibility. Is She's a little rattled in here. Uh, she also was really nervous about um, going past the big screen. And she's a little bit up. She looks actually a little bit more like the jumpers that we saw. So she was able to set back and get that ad in there. Um, but she's does not quite have that rhythm that we we're looking for uh, that some of the others displayed earlier. So she obviously had a really good round or a couple rounds earlier in the week, but sometimes it's a little different environment in here. So that was eloquent Ethel and Stephanie Framer, and now we will have the leaders coming into the finale to do their show hunter round and it'll be number 1179 and that's still dreaming ridden by charles harefield whom we saw ride win the shake earlier so <laughs> making the f finale is a major accomplishment making the finale with two horses in the same discipline is an incredibly impressive accomplishment and that's what charles harefield has done and the horse that Charles will be riding next is a five-year-old chestnut gelding named Still Dreaming, who's sired by Flatter, and Flatter stands over at Claiborne Farm. And Donna, who are some of the, the sires we were talking earlier, because this is the second Flatter baby that, that we've seen in the finale, um, some of the sires that, that you've been particularly impressed with as you read through some of these pedigrees. Well, you see the whole... You see the whole gamut of sires as you read through the pedigrees, and that's one of the things that, uh, that really strikes you is that there's certainly no um, particular pedigree that's going to give you a better chance to make it to the thoroughbred makeover. But yes, you've seen curlins and flatters and tappets and horses that would go for definitely six figures at a sale as a yearling, and uh, they don't necessarily pan out to be a racehorse, but we've seen some beautiful athletic performances from them. But I think Flatter in particular is a horse who just has a reputation for just creating a really beautiful, well-balanced horse. They're almost always bay, just like him, and uh, they are almost always beautiful and well-balanced as he was. This horse that we'll see in a moment, Still Dreaming, sold for $460,000 at Keeneland in 2017. So you're right, Flatter, very much a well-regarded sire for racing. And, and Ashley, you have a particular affinity to Flatter, pretty much anything by Flatter. Like, you know what? We'll give this one a chance in, in the show ring. Uh, but for opposite reasons, as Donna said, I look for sport horse prospects, and I have never seen a, a bad uh, Flatter baby in any of the sport horse disciplines. This horse had some success on the track, uh, broke the maiden at Laurel Park in Maryland in 2019 and ran in graded stakes company a couple of times in Florida and in Maryland and was second in the easy goer stakes that takes place on Belmont weekend at Belmont Park back in 2019, the last start that this horse made and now transitioning to being a show hunter with the very talented rider Charles Harefield. Ashley, you've competed at the makeover before with two horses, and you, you really need a whole team behind you, as Donna mentioned, with recognizing the racetrack workers by Godolphin. Uh, I think a lot of these trainers would recognize the, the people that have come with them to help groom, tack their horse up, um, especially with a quick back-to-back -back that, that this rider has had. Absolutely. If you're going back-to-back uh, -back like that, um, as kind of that we saw uh, Britt Vegas do earlier, where she had to actually make a tack change in between, uh, but it's, it's not something that's very easy to do alone. You do need to have a crew, and uh, they're de generally very dedicated, loyal, knowledgeable, and love those horses just as much as the person who's on their back. And who's the talented person who does that beautiful tail? <laughs> 
That is definitely a trademark in the hunters. I'm fairly certain all of them had that. Uh, it, when you go to a, a hunter show, you're going to see all those those tails braided in such a way. Now that I've gotten involved in the, the sport horse world, I do appreciate when some of the racing owners and trainers take the time to braid their horses. Steve Asmussen was just in a inside the groom bag feature for Pollock Report about how he braids all his horses. And we saw Steve at the Preakness. And I said, Steve, you probably don't get told this much when people come up to you at the racetrack, but I love that you braid your horses. <laughs> Well, as it said in the article, he gets that from his mother, Marilyn Asmussen, who always did it. And now he's got a groom who does it. And it didn't mention in the article that Steve is actually very, very good at it. He's about as good as I've ever seen, but he doesn't braid a lot of manes anymore himself. So Charles was encouraging that horse forward through that line, it looked like. Ashley, what are you saying? He looks smooth to me, but what are your thoughts? He does have a nice rhythm. And one thing that does play a part is he's got a really nice big structure this horse is really nice he's really leggy and he truly looks the part of the hunter as well as moves that way yeah and he's one of the rare non-bay flatters but he's still got that beautiful frame i'm a big fan of chestnuts <laughs> so this horse still dreaming ridden by charles harefield out of the dam seeking gabriel by forestry that makes this gelding a half-brother to the former Kentucky Derby winner, Nyquist. Time now to recognize the winners for the show hunter discipline sponsored by Beyond the Wire. In 10th place, number 1096, Juder, ridden by Team K Equestrian. And these are the top finishing team for the show hunter discipline at the thoroughbred makeover. Finishing in ninth place, number 1118, Miss Rage, ridden by Aaron Cost. Eighth place went to number 1135, R. Paul Thomas, ridden by Christina Ellison. Finishing in seventh place, number 1028, Black Tavish and Deborah Ward. In the sixth place, number 1156, Robbie Jones, ridden by Kelly Junta. Now coming in the ring, the fifth place finisher, number 1203, Win the Shake, ridden by Charles Harefield. Fourth place, number 1051, Cruz and Comet and Sarah Joy Crane Mount. Now the third place finisher, 1066, Eloquent Ethel, ridden by Stephanie Framer. And Eloquent Ethel and Stephanie Framer, also the winner of the Thoroughbred Charities of America Award for Show Hunters. In second place, number 1073, First Commander, ridden by Katherine Jenkins. Also the top amateur finisher. And the winner of the class of 2020 mega makeover for the show hunter discipline with a score of 276.50. Congratulations to number 1179, Still Dreaming, written by Charles Harefield. Also recognizing the top junior finisher, that was number 1001, Abatement, written by Reese Dorsey. And the Best Conditioned Award winner, sponsored by Nina Bonney. Black Tavish, number 1028, written by Deborah Ward. After some rhythmic show hunter rounds for the top finishers in the ring, you're welcome to let your horse out if you like and take a lap around the stadium or the show hunter ring here inside the TCA covered arena. Yeah. Ashley says maybe we'll call it a victory canter rather than a victory gallop. The success of the family of the winner with still dreaming 
out of the damn seeking Gabriel who produced the former Kentucky Derby winner Nyquist who was sired by Uncle Mo and now this gelding sired by Flatter, a retired racehorse project thoroughbred makeover winner. And there they are on screen, Charles Harefield and Still Dreaming. Ashley, one of the horses that was in the top 10 that you mentioned when we announced the results, Robbie Jones, what a cool combination to be top 10 in both hunters and in eventers. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Those are two very, very different disciplines and to be able to get nice and steady and, and place so well, sixth in, in hunters and then fifth fifth in, in eventing is, is really impressive. Those are two completely different ways of going. 